2015 was a rough year for a lot of media companies, but Netflix was a bit unusual. It had a remarkable performance over the year. I'm joined by Matthew Garahan, global media editor for the FT. We just had, in the first couple weeks of this year, a big announcement from Netflix. Their global rollout, which they had been touting for more than a year now, um, is underway. They launched in 130 countries. Mm. What's happening? What's going to happen with the company in the year ahead? So Netflix has been growing pretty rapidly internationally, adding markets here and there. Uh, it wants to become the, the first global television, internet television network. At the Consumer Electronics Show a couple of weeks ago, they surprised everybody with this, this plan, uh, this rapid growth plan, and actually revealed that they switched the service on in 130 new countries, giving them coverage pretty much across the world, everywhere apart from, from China. At this point in their growth, they're really looking for that additional expansion to come internationally. I mean, they're already quite large in the U.S. They're, they're, they are big in the U.S. There are more than 50 million subscribers in the U.S. Uh, and their earnings, um, the recent earnings, they missed their subscriber uh, target, uh, which normally would have sent the, the, the stock into a bit of a tailspin. Net Netflix shares tend to yo-yo pretty rapidly, even though over the last 12 months they're, they're up about 120, 130 percent. But it didn't this time because they outperformed internationally. And this is before uh, the recent announcement about the 130 new territories that they're switching the service on. Of course, they're not the only ones to figure this out. Um, right. Here in the U.S., they have competition from, from Amazon, from mm -hmm. Hulu. What about internationally? Are there other companies that are looking to try to get ahead of Netflix or try to catch up with them before they have that kind of dominance that they already have had in the U.S.? Well, Amazon and Hulu, it, Hulu is considering uh, a, a more of an international play. They're already in Japan in a sort of limited sense, but their like, recent comments from James Murdoch at Fox, which is one of the, the three uh, Hulu um, shareholders, is thinking about going into more markets. Amazon certainly is. They've increased the amount of their spending on, on content. At the recent Golden Globes, they were sort of toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with, with Netflix in terms of the, the awards that they were winning at the, at the Emmys back in, in September. I think going forward, they're going to find themselves competing against established broadcasters, particularly in Europe, where the, the broadcast and, and cable landscape is much more competitive. And I think consumers are better served than they are in the US. The, the phenomenon of cord cutting doesn't really exist to the same extent in Europe that it, that it does here. The big operators like Sky have pretty robust over-the-top services where you can watch programming on demand. You don't need to cut the cord and get a, a cheaper alternative. Pricing is better and more competitive than it is in the US. So breaking through in places like that w won't be as easy for Netflix as it has been in the United States. But then the world's a big place. You know, you think about the Middle East and Africa and South America, Latin America, Australia. I mean, there, there's, there's a lot out there, a lot of, a lot of ground or territory for it to take. And of course, in addition to the cost of just purely, you know, getting the infrastructure in to do these things, um, they're also going to be facing much higher content costs, right, as they do this, this sort of rollout. How are they dealing with that? Well, they, they acknowledged, uh, I think, when they announced at, at, at CES in Las Vegas that there are, there are difficulties. You can't just, you know, say you're going to provide programming all over the world. I mean, typically, the Hollywood model is that the studios that make the TV shows we watch on, on television ev um, every night will do a country by country deal. They'll go to the local broadcaster or cable company in that territory, they'll, they'll, they'll structure a deal. Netflix is proposing that when those deals are up, that it will write a check for the, the full amount for the whole world. And that's gonna be, that means their content spending is gonna be higher. And they've said that they're gonna spend $6 billion on content this year in original production and licensing. But it also means structuring deals around the world will be more complicated. It just, just, it just makes it harder. And they're going to run into the, these issues, these local um, sensibility, cultural issues like they are in Kenya. Mm -hmm. I think we'll hear more about that, particularly in the Muslim world, possibly, and that might present some problems. But generally, I think the, the picture for them is pretty rosy in terms of the territory that's out there for them to take. Thanks so much, Matt. Thanks very much.